Do my glasses look as dirty as they feel like they are? Oh, they're just really scratched up. Okay. <laughs> what am I even doing here? He lives in London. Who who cares about that? Any, no, don't say any of that. Oh, crap. Did I say your name wrong again? Is it Gillian? It's Gillian Flynn, isn't it? Welcome to another video. My name is Heather and as always I'm reading with a vengeance and I hope you are too. Big love to all you OGs who keep coming back and if you're new to my channel, a very warm welcome to you. I'm so happy that you're here. I hope everybody is doing very well. I know by the thumbnail it looks like I have accumulated a butt ton of books and I have but it's been over like two months. And if you're new to my channel, I don't really buy books. I have access to books because I work for a bookstore and if they're damaged, I get first dibs before they're donated. I also have access to advanced reader copies. So that's what all of these books are. If they're available to me and my coworkers and they're books that I are, am interested in, I snatch them right up. Sometimes I change my mind and I bring them back. Uh, when I am done reading them, I put them back in the donate box, but I tend to accumulate a lot of books that way. So I want to talk to you about them. And it is my first haul of 2024. So let's get to it, shall we? So there are a couple of books in this pile that have been around for a while, and I'm not going to get too in depth in their synopsis because they've already been talked about a bunch. I just happened to get my own copy. As an example, I got a copy of A Little Life by Hanya Yanagihara. See, this was in the damage box. So, I mean, this book has been talked about a bunch. I hear it is heartbreaking. I hear it is depressing. I hear it's hard to read because it is so sad. Those things do not scare me, okay? I think this one follows, I want to say, four classmates, four college classmates. They're broke, they're adrift, and all they have is really their ambition and their friendship and bad things happen to them along the way, and I am here for it. So I get to add this one to my physical library. Next one I got my hands on is The Teacher by Frida McFadden. I think this comes out in February. I'm recording this at the beginning of February. I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time talking about this because I talked about this book in my, one of my recent new books that I'm excited about. So of course I was excited. I saw it in the damage box and I picked it right up. So if you want to read more about this book, I will link that video down below where I talk more about this one. Um, I haven't read Frida McFadden yet, so I have a feeling now that I have one of her books that this is going to be the first one. This next book I won't say a whole lot about either because I also talked about this one in a new releases that I'm excited about, and that was for books that were released in November. But it's getting a lot of talk. It's on the bestsellers list. And I think a lot of people are really liking it. And that is The Frozen River by Ariel Lahan. This is an ARC copy. So once the book is published, we donate the ARCs. Um, and when I saw this in the ARC uh, donation box, I just had to have it. I'm just super excited about it. I'll just quickly read the back for you for this one. Uh, Maine, 1789. The Kennebec River freezes, entombing a man in the ice. Martha Ballard is summoned to examine the body and a determined cause of death. As the local midwife and healer, Martha is good at keeping secrets. Her diary is a record of every birth and death, every murder and debacle that unfolds in the town of Hollowell. In that diary, she also documented the details of an alleged rape that occurred four months earlier. Now, one of the men accused of that heinous attack has been found dead in the ice. While Martha is certain she knows what happened the night of the assault, she suspects that the two crimes are linked and that there is more to both cases than meets the eye. So the story goes from there. I'm super excited to read this one. So many people are talking about this book. This book is becoming very, very popular. So I'm really hoping to get to it soon. This next one, I'm not quite so sure, but it has been getting a lot of talk and it is one of Reese's book club picks. So when I saw it, I grabbed it. Although the more I read about it, it might be one that I take right back uh, to the donation pile. And that is The House in the Pines by Anna Reyes. This is a mystery thriller. It says Maya was a high school senior when her best friend Aubrey dropped dead in front of the enigmatic man named Frank, whom they'd been spending time with all summer. Seven years later, Maya lives in Boston with a loving boyfriend and is kicking the secret addiction that has allowed her to cope 
with what happened years ago, the gaps in her memories and the lost time that she can't account for. But her past comes rushing back when she comes across a recent YouTube video, what? In which a young woman suddenly keels over and dies in a diner while sitting across from none other than Frank. Plunged into the trauma that has defined her life, Maya heads to her Berkshire's hometown to relive that fateful summer, the influence Frank once had on her, and the obsessive jealousy that nearly destroyed her friendship with Aubrey. At her mother's house, she excavates fragments of her past and notices hidden messages in her deceased Guatemalan father's book that didn't stand out to her earlier. To save herself, she must understand a story written before she was born, but time keeps running out and soon all roads are leading back to Frank's cabin. That's weird. It almost feels like that last paragraph was added on there by mistake. That feels like an entirely different story. So maybe that's why it's not getting really highly reviewed. I'm not really sure about this one. I mean, that sounds interesting, but it might go off the rails a little bit. Have you guys read this book? I would love to know what you thought about it. I keep hearing different things about Reese's book club books that are not the greatest. So I'm not really sure, but I'm a sucker for mystery thrillers. So I picked it up and now I have it. This next one I picked up mostly for my husband because he likes to read horror books and we don't get a whole lot of horror arcs. This one I was able to get my hands on because it was damaged by uh, our shop cats. And so I brought this home for him but it sounds really interesting. Uh, the book I'm talking about is Fever House by Keith Rawson. And I knew he was gonna love this cover too. So, you know, let's see what this one is about for you horror lovers out there. When leg breaker Hutch Holtz rolls up to a rundown apartment complex in Portland, Oregon to collect overdue drug money, a severed hand is the last thing he expects to find stashed in the client's refrigerator. Hutch quickly realizes that the hand induces uncontrollable madness. Anyone in its proximity is overcome with a boundless compulsion for violence. Within hours, catastrophic forces are set into motion. Dark op government agents who have been desperately hunting for the hand are on Hutch's tail. More of the city's residents fall under its brutal influence and suddenly all of Portland stands at the precipice of disaster. But it's all the same for Catherine Moriarty, a singer whose sudden fame and precipitous downfall were followed by the mysterious death of her estranged husband. Suicide, allegedly. Her trauma has made her agoraphobic, shackled within the confines of her apartment. Her son, Nick, has moved home to care for her, quietly making his living working for Hutch's boss. When Hutch calls Nick in distress, looking for someone else to take the hand, Catherine and Nick are plunged into a global struggle that will decimate the walls of the carefully arranged life they've built. Mother and son must evade both crazed, bloodthirsty masses and deceitful government agents while exercising family secrets that have risen from the dead, secrets they soon discover that might hold the very key to humanity's survival. It sounds fun. I mean, if you like horror, I think it sounds really fun. And it, if it's about a, a severed hand and this is the hand, I mean, this might be a fun ride. Okay, this next one I picked up just because I'm really interested to read her other stuff, the stuff that kind of put her name on the map. And you'll know what I'm talking about when I tell you the book is The Poppy War by R.F. Kuang. The first R.F. Kuang book I read was Yellow Face because I'm more into literary fiction than I am about with sci-fi fantasy. And this is mostly fantasy and I've not really had a good time with fantasy, but this one is so highly rated. This is uh, the first in a trilogy. I just feel like it would be worth giving it a try. It says, when war orphan Rin aced the Keiju, oh my God, you have me lost already. The empire-wide test to find the most talented youth to learn at the academies, she surprised everyone, test officials, the guardians who wanted to marry her off and further their criminal enterprise, and even herself. But being a dark-skinned peasant girl from the south is not easy at Syngard, the most elite military school in Nikon. Targeted by rival classmates for her color, poverty, and gender, Rin discovers that gods long thought dead are very much alive and that she possesses a lethal, unearthly power, an aptitude for the nearly mythical art of shamanism that could be the weapon the Empire desperately needs. I don't know. You know, the hype sucked me in as far as grabbing this book, but I don't know. I mean, I'll give it a try, but I'm not going to like power through. It better grab me or else... It'll be a TNF, but I mean, it's got a beautiful cover and I'm all about trying new things. <laughs> Do I not 
learn anything? Do I not learn anything about hype? Okay, hear me out, hear me out. Okay, so first of all, fourth wing, all the hype, I know, I get it. I'm gonna talk about that hype in just a second because it's not just your average ordinary hype, okay? But look at this cover, it's gorgeous. I got the special edition, the sprayed edges. Are you kidding me? I had to grab it. I'm not even going to read you the synopsis of this because everybody knows about this book, but it's basically Harry Potter with dragons. But here's the thing about hype, okay? Take a book like The Great Gatsby, classic by F. Scott Fitzgerald. It's been read a lot. It's been read by a lot of people. So just to give you an idea, just for context of this is not just ordinary hype we're dealing with. So on Goodreads, it's been rated 5 million times, over 5 million, 5 million 168,000 times. That's how many times this book was rated on Goodreads, The Great Gatsby. Okay, been around for almost 100 years. Fourth Wing, that hasn't been out for even a year yet, has been rated 1.2 million times on Goodreads. 1.2 million times less than a year out. And just additional context, Demon Copperhead, which has won the Pulitzer Prize and won the Women's Prize for Fiction. Barbara King Solver has been around for a long time. This has been on the bestseller list for weeks and weeks and weeks. Okay, Demon Copperhead has been rated 350,000 times. So that's what I mean by not your average hype. I couldn't not grab this. Don't judge me. Okay, so now I'm going to talk about newer books, with the exception of this one. I picked this one up because I had a feeling I was going to be needing to read it for the Book 2 Prize. And while I'm not reading it this round, it might be something I need to read in a future round, if not the Women's Prize. And the book I'm talking about is The Fraud by Zadie Smith. Um, Zadie Smith has been has had books on the Women's Prize for Fiction before. And I just have a feeling she's going to be in the long list with this one. I tried to read Zadie Smith a really long time ago. I tried to read White Teeth and I DNF'd it. And I have a feeling it was more about timing for me. So I want to give that a go again. And I definitely am going to try for this one. It is 1873. Mrs. Eliza Touche is the Scottish housekeeper and cousin by marriage of a once famous novelist now in decline, William Ainsworth, with whom she has lived for 30 years. Mrs. Touche is a woman of many interests, literature, justice, abolitionism, class, her cousin, his wives, this life, and the next. But she is also skeptical. She suspects her cousin of having no talent. His successful friend, Mr. Charles Dickens, of being a bully and a moralist, and England of being a land of facades in which nothing is quite what it seems. Andrew Bogle, meanwhile, grew up enslaved on the Hope Plantation, Jamaica. He knows every lump of sugar comes at a human cost, that the rich deceive the poor, and that people are more easily manipulated than they realize. When Bogle finds himself in London, star witness in a celebrated case of imposture, he knows his future depends on telling the right story. The Tickborn trial, wherein a lower class butcher from Australia claimed he was in fact the rightful heir of a sizable estate and title, captivates Mrs. Touche in all of England. Is Sir Roger Tickborn really who he says he is, or is he a fraud? Mrs. Touche is a woman of the world. Mr. Bogle is no fool, but in a world of hypocrisy and self-deception, deciding what is real prov proves a complicated task. Based on real historical events, The Fraud is a dazzling novel about truth and fiction, Jamaica and Britain, fraudulence and authenticity, and the mystery of other people. Sounds fascinating. Mark my words, I believe that this is going to be on the long list for the Women's Prize for Fiction. Oh, one more, one more that's been around for a bit. I think it made kind of a big to-do on BookTube when it came out. And that is Plain Bad Heroines by Emily M. Danforth. Is this Dark Academia? Our story begins in 1902 at the Brookhant School for Girls. Flo and Clara, two impressionable students, are obsessed with each other and with a daring young writer named Mary McLean, the author of a scandalous best-selling memoir. To show their devotion to Mary, the girls establish their own private club and call it the Plain Bad Heroine Society. I remember now the hardback cover, and this had me intrigued. I love this cover, if I'm thinking of the right one. 
They meet in secret in a nearby apple orchard, the setting of their wildest happiness and ultimately of their macabre deaths. This is where their bodies are later discovered with a copy of Mary's book splayed beside, beside them. The victims of a swarm of stinging, angry yellow jackets. Yep, this is the one I'm thinking of. Less than five years later, the Brookhand School for Girls closes its doors forever, but not before three more people mysteriously die on the property, each in a most troubling way. Over a century later, the now abandoned and troubling Brookhands is back in the news when Wonderkin writer Merritt Emmons publishes a breakout book celebrating the queer feminist history surrounding the haunted and cursed Gilded Age Institution. Her best-selling book inspires a controversial horror film adaptation starring celebrity actor and lesbian it girl Harper Harper playing the ill-fated heroine Flo opposite B-list actress and former child star Audrey Wells as Clara. But as Bookhands opens its gates once again and our three modern heroines arrive on set to begin filming, past and present become grimly entangled or perhaps just grimly exploited. And soon it's impossible to tell where the curse leaves off and Hollywood begins. So who's read this? Have you guys read this? What do you think? It's a chunker of a book. It is well over 500 pages. It sounds like it be, could be a fun ride, but I feel also that it might not be for me, but I don't know. I'm intrigued. I'm intrigued. It's not like Dark Academia really excites me like it excites a lot of people. You know, Ninth House was okay. I haven't read the, the Secret History yet. I don't know. This one intrigues me. So when I saw it, I had to grab it. And I'm running out of room here. These last four books are very new books, two of which have not even come out yet. The first one is Anna O by Matthew Blake. I think this cover is intriguing. This, I believe, is a mystery thriller. What if your nightmares weren't really nightmares at all? I'm sorry, I think I've killed them. These are the last words texted by Anna O oh just before she fell into a coma-like sleep. A budding 25-year-old writer with a bright future, Anna was suddenly compelled to stab two people to death. She had no apparent motive and she hasn't woken up since. Anna is dubbed Sleeping Beauty by the tabloids and her condition is a rare psychosomatic disorder known to neurologists as resignation syndrome. Dr. Benedict Prince is a forensic psychologist and an expert in the field of sleep-related homicides. His methods are the last hope of solving the infamous Anna O case and waking up Anna so she can stand trial. But he must be careful treating such a high-profile suspect. He's got career secrets and a complicated personal life of his own. As Anna shows the first signs of stirring, Benedict must determine what really happened and whether Anna should be held responsible for her crimes. Only Anna knows the truth about that night, but only Benedict knows how to discover it. And what they find out will put them both in danger. One seems intriguing. Very silent patient-ish to me. What do you think? Have you guys read this? I'd love to know what you thought. This one came out just last week, and it is The Things We Didn't Know by Elba Iris Perez. Cross-cultural coming-of-age debut. I love coming of age so much. We have Andrea Rodriguez is nine years old when her mother whisks her and her brother Pablo away from Waranoco, a tiny New England factory town that is the only home they've ever known. With no plan and no money, she leaves them with family members in Puerto Rico and promises to return. In the years that follow, Andrea and Pablo are brought back to Waranoco, only to discover a rapidly changing town and an all-American culture they almost but can never quite fit into. As they navigate the social in-betweens, clashing family values, and sometimes harsh realities of growing up, they must embrace both the triumphs and heartache that mark their journey to adulthood. A heartfelt, evocative portrait of another side of life in 1950s America. I'm definitely intrigued. I love a coming of age, historical fiction, and it's barely over 300 pages. Yeah, so this one is out. So if you're interested in this one, have a look at your bookstore. All right, these last two aren't even out yet. Which one comes out first? Okay, so this one comes out in June. This one is called Bear by Julia Phillips, a mesmerizing novel of two sisters on a Pacific Northwest island whose lives are upended by an unexpected visitor, a tale of family obsession and a mysterious creature in the woods. Sam and her sister Elena dream of another life. On the island off the coast of Washington, where they were born and raised, they and their mother struggle to survive. Sam works long days on the ferry that delivers wealthy mainlanders to their vacation homes while Elena bartends at the local golf club, but even together they can't earn enough to get by, stirring their frustration about the limits that shape their existence. 
Then one night on the boat, Sam spots a bear swimming the dark waters of the channel. Where is it going? What does it want? When the bear turns up by their home, Sam, terrified, is more convinced than ever that it's time to leave the island. But Elena responds differently to the massive beast. Enchanted by its presence, she throws into doubt the plan to escape and puts their long-held dream in danger. A story about the love between sisters, yes please, and the mysteries of the animals that live among us, yes please, and within us, Bear is the propulsive, mythical, rich new novel from one of the most acclaimed young writers in America. So I am really hoping to get to this one before it comes out. I've been trying to read one or two arcs a month so that I can get a review to you before the book comes out so you can place your pre-orders or just add them to your TBR so that you can go grab it once it comes out. So this comes out in June and I'm really hoping to read it well before then. And finally, the last book I want to talk about is Broiler by Eli Craner. I picked this one up based on this author. I read his Ozark Dogs and I absolutely loved it. So he's got a new one. This one comes out in July. The troubles of two desperate families, one white, one Mexican-American, converge in the ruthlessly underworld of an Arkansas chicken processing plant. Gabriela Manchaca and Edwin Saucedo are hardworking, undocumented employees at the Detmer Foods chicken plant in Springdale, Arkansas, just a stone's throw away from the trailer park where they've lived together for seven years. While dealing with personal tragedies of their own, the young couple endures the brutal dehumanizing conditions at the plant in exchange for bare bones pay. When the plant manager, Luke Jackson, fires Edwin to set an example for the rest of the workers and to show the higher-ups that he's ready for a major promotion, Edwin is determined to get revenge on Luke and his wife, Mimi, a new mother who stays at home with her six-month-old son. Edwin's impulsive action sets in motion a devastating chain of events that illuminates the deeply entrenched power dynamics between those who revel at the top and those who toil at the bottom. I'm super excited about this one. I will definitely be reading this one before it comes out in July. I'm also going to link my review video that I did for Ozark Dog so that you can learn more about this author. I plan on reading his entire backlist, although I don't think it's that long. If you've read any other books besides Ozark Dogs by this author, I would love to hear about it. Please let me know down in the comments. So that is it. These are the books that I have acquired over the past couple of months. I may need a new shelf. <laughs> what do you think about these books? Which of these books are you most excited about? Which of these books, the older ones that I talked about, have you read? I would love to hear your thoughts on those. Or you could just say hi down in the doodly doo. If you're still watching at this point, please consider giving that like button a boop and a subscribe would be wonderful. I'm so happy that you're all here. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much for watching and I will see you all next time.